Hello students. So, up until previous class, uh, we concluded up to um, uh, stability of solutions and uh, we also gave some definitions related to periodic solutions. Uh, and uh, in today's chapter, uh, basically we will start with um, chaotic theory. So, this has something to do with the dynamical systems. Uh, as I uh, said in the introduction, uh, basically uh, dynamical systems is a separate course um, in itself. and. Uh, chaotic theory is a part of it and um, here we uh, since we are talking about ordinary differential equation it makes sense uh, to talk about dynamical systems but not in detail. So, I will touch uh, some parts of the uh, chaotic theory or chaos and uh, we will try to understand what does it actually mean and uh, I, I will define some terminologies and give you some examples that give you a kind of a feeling that uh, what do we actually mean by chaos or chaotic theory. Right. So, here chaos is more uh, in terms of uh, differential equations, right. And uh, what do we mean by actually uh, chaos? So, it actually um, signifies, I mean there is no formal definition that is available for chaos. Um, so, uh, it usually means that um, if uh, you play with the initial condition a little bit, that means if we um, uh, if we hamper or if we perturb the initial condition a little bit, then it may be possible that our solution uh, may not behave well. And uh, as uh, if you look into the long term behavior, that means uh, if uh, T is greater than let us say some capital T, then the solution may not be stable at all. So, uh, we might get some local behavior that means uh, the solution will remain finite locally even if you change the initial condition. But in the long run, the solution may not be stable. So, that is the kind of behavior um, we associate to chaos or chaotic behavior of a differential equation. And this is um, the underlying, um, how to say, um, the, the basis for this, uh, this chapter that uh, what happens if you are actually perturbing or playing with the initial conditions. And uh, based on this, we have several terminologies, the theorems, some examples. So, we will slowly move towards, uh, towards that. So, basically the idea of chaos or the chaotic theory originated um, quite a while ago. So, in uh, 1890, uh, Poincare, Poin, uh, P capital, Poincare was actually uh, studying. So, he was studying a three body problem, right. He was studying a three body problem. And in his work, he realized and uh, pointed out that uh, the problem is no longer integrable. That means, uh, when he was trying to solve it after a while, he realized that this particular problem is no longer integrable and moreover, the numerical solution depends uh, extremely, I mean it is extremely sensitive to the initial condition. So, even I mean uh, he realized that it is no longer integrable. So, then he tried to solve it uh, numerically and uh, while solving it numerically, he found out that uh, the entire calculation is very sensitive to the initial condition. So, if uh, the initial condition is not properly chosen or if it is perturbed uh, even a little bit, then um, it actually gives erratic behavior. That means, uh, it may be finite for a certain time, then after a certain time it becomes uh, unstable, the solution becomes unstable and all that. So, this was the very first uh, observation that was made by Poincare um, in 1890 while he was studying three body problem. Then later on uh, in 20th century Lawrence, um, so the same guy who uh, gave the idea of Lawrence series. So, Lawrence was also studying a uh, three body problem and uh, Edward Lawrence actually his full name was Edward Lawrence. Uh, he was also studying the three body problem and uh, he uh, actually uh, he had uh, I mean nonlinear. So, he had nonlinear ordinary differential equations. He was actually studying the atmospheric uh, to he was actually trying to model the atmospheric problem and it uh, gave rise to uh, nonlinear ordinary differential equation. And he also discovered the similar kind of sensitive behavior towards the initial condition. So, whatever system of nonlinear OD he had, um, when he tried to solve it, uh, he noticed the similar kind of uh, sensitivity towards the initial condition. And then he made a very famous quote uh, which reads as when the present determines the future, but the approximate present does not um, approximate approximately determine the future. That means, based on the initial condition, we can 
So initially, we can predict what kind of what what kind of behavior the solution will have. But if you choose the approximate initial condition, that means you are not choosing the exact initial condition that you should be choosing for the stable behavior. If you are perturbing the initial condition, that means you are little bit away from the actual initial condition, then we cannot approximately determine the the actual solution because the actual solution may actually start showing um, uh, instability after a certain time right so th this is the kind of uh, observation it was made by earlier mathematicians later on the theory got to further evolve and um, we started looking into um, the chaotic uh, behavior of ordinary differential equations so this is sort of to give you a feeling that uh, what do we actually try to uh, explain by this uh, um, chaos uh, in a dynamical system right now uh, in the same in the in the spirit of same um, uh, uh, definition i would like to um, i would like to define uh, the chaos basically chaos theory so chaos theory or chaos chaos uh, let me raise so chaos theory or chaotic theory theory basically uh, it is uh, uh, it is it is uh, it focuses on the patterns and deterministic and deterministic deterministic uh, deterministic behaviors behaviors of a dynamical system dynamical systems or you can also call it system of equations system of ODs dynamical system or system of ODs that are or uh, that are highly sensitive to initial conditions to initial conditions in a nutshell we can say that this can be uh, kind of like formal definition of uh, um, chaos right so if uh, and, and th th we'll come to the examples where we can see how this uh, chaos can be determined uh, defined and um, so basically uh, if uh, small difference in the initial condition so small uh, differences in the initial condition in the initial conditions such as those due to errors in measurement as errors in measurements in measurements or due to rounding off it can be due to anything like when you are measuring or when you are rounding off or truncating whatever so due to rounding off rounding off due to rounding off um, in numerical computation rounding off in numerical numerical computations can yield can yield widely diverging outcomes for such dynamical such a dynamical system such a dynamical system rendering system rendering the long term prediction the long term predictions of the behavior of the solution in general behavior of the solution in general right
So, this is not the complete uh, uh, description of chaos, but more or less it runs towards the similar direction. That means, if you are altering or playing with the initial condition, it might lead to a very erratic behavior of the solution, right. So, that um, uh, change of initial condition or perturbing the initial condition can come from measurements or when you are rounding off or truncating in numerical computation, whatever way the error is there, it will lead to um, a diverging behavior of the solution and therefore, we cannot make long term predictions that means, when t tends to infinity or t is sufficiently large, we cannot say much things about the solution, right. So, as I said in general, uh, we do not have a, a formal definition of the chaos, but uh, this is the uh, way we define and uh, basically, uh, the chaos, the word chaos means uh, means um, a state of disorder. It means that a state of disorder. What do you actually mean by chaos? I mean, in general, whatever the meaning of this adjective has chaos, uh, it is the same. So, a state of disorder and uh, it is, um, I mean, the, the kind of like formal definition was uh, given by, so originally formulated by the uh, um, definition, I mean somewhat close to the, the definition uh, given by Robert, Robert L. Devani says that to classify says that to classify a dynamical system, dynamical system as chaotic, C -A -C -H -A -O -T -I -C, chaotic, if uh, it must have it must have uh, these properties. So, at least uh, if it has these properties, we can say that it is going to be a chaotic system. So, what is the first property? The first property is it must be sensi sensitive to the initial condition. It must be sensitive to initial conditions. first. Second, it must be topologically transitive. We will come back to that topologically transitive. And third one is it must, it must have dense periodic orbits, right. So, these are the three uh, conditions, these are the three criteria based on which you can sort of judge whether a given system is um, um, sensitive, uh, this um, chaotic or not, right. Now, um, in the, towards the similar lines of uh, sensitive uh, of uh, initial towards the initial condition, um, I would like to define one more definition. It is called as attractor of a um, uh, dynamical system. So, in the towards the motivation of similar lines, uh, I would like to define attractor and then we will go to some examples. Attractors. Uh, so, an attractor is basically an attractor of uh, dynamical system, dynamical system or system of ODs um, is a set of states towards, uh, toward which, toward which 
a system tend to tends to evolve for evolve for a wide variety of initial conditions of this system. So basically, um, we have an attractor of a dynamical system is a set of state uh, towards which a system tends to evolve. That means uh, if we are changing the initial condition a little bit, uh, the attractor is basically um, uh, is a set. I mean, is a set of states uh, such that the system is evolving around that state, right? So it's kind of uh, giving us some kind of uh, stability or some kind of. Um, uh, I mean, as t tends to uh, infinity or t becomes sufficiently large, it will still remain around those. Uh, um, uh, I mean, the solution remains around the attractor. So it kinds of it kind of talks about uh, the stability of the system or of the state stability of the solution. And uh, basically, uh, if the 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 attractors can be classified uh, or mathematically can be given by. Um, okay, let's go to the next. Page. So, the mathematical or the formal definition will be of this type. So, mathematical definition, mathematical definition. So, suppose uh, let T uh, be the time and uh, F T comma this be a function. be a function be a function which specifies the dynamics of the system dynamics of the system that is if a is a point in an n dimensional phase space representing the initial state of the system the system then f of 0 comma a will be a and uh, for positive values of uh, t f of t comma a is the result of the evolution of this state after t units of time. So then um, if the system, so for example, For example, uh, if the system describes the evolution of a free particle in one dimension, particle in one dimension. in one dimension then the phase space in the plane r2 
with coordinates x comma v with coordinates x comma v where x is the position of the particle and uh, v is the velocity and a will become then x comma v and the evolution is given by f of x uh, f of t comma x comma v t comma x comma v is equals to x plus t v comma v and uh, an attractor basically an attractor an attractor is a subset a of the phase space characterized by following conditions. So basically what are the conditions? So uh, number one is uh, A is forward invariant, forward invariant under F that means uh, if uh, if if a is an element of capital a then so is f of t comma a for all t positive Second number condition is uh, there exists a neighborhood of A called the basin of a tractor for A and uh, denoted by B A which consists of of all points small b that enter A in the limit t tends to infinity in the limit as t tends to infinity and uh, third condition is there is no proper or non-empty subset of A having first and second properties and second properties All right so and uh, of course there are two types of characters so the there are two types of characters we'll come back to them later on so one of them is fixed point fixed point character another one is limit cycle right so basically uh, we have two types of uh, attractors not characters attractors uh, fixed point attractor and limit cycle attractor we'll come back to them uh, in a while and uh, an attractor uh, another small definition is an attractor 
is called strange that means strange attractor uh, if it has uh, a fractal structure fractal structure structure that is if it has non integer house drop dimension right and uh, though this this is often the case when the dynamics are uh, house drop dimension if it has non integer house drop dimension right not dimensions dimension so this is where we lead to this lead to uh, chaotic behavior so dimension right and uh, there is a very famous uh, butterfly uh, example so we'll see um, how does this uh, figure looks like so we can plot one uh, um, equal i mean a figure for one of the attractors and then it sort of creates a butterfly like structure and uh, that is called as a strange uh, attractor so strange attractors actually has uh, some kind of fractal structure and uh, basically because of that it is called as the strange attractors now uh, there are other definitions there are other examples of attractors uh, like uh, uh, double scroll attractor henon attractor rosler attractor lorenz attractor so uh, i mean we can introduce all these concepts since we don't have uh, uh, an extensive course on uh, chaotic theory here so we'll uh, skip them okay now let's uh, let us define uh, let us look into one of the examples all right so example 1 so that the let us consider consider uh, x n plus 1 is equals to f of x n which is equals to 2 mu uh, x n when uh, 0 less than or equal to x n less than or equal to half and uh, 1 minus x n when half less than x n less than or equal to 1. Okay. So, basically um, you can think of this type of equation dy dx is equals to f of uh, y comma x or just f of x right now here uh, if you want to write uh, this um, uh, iteration or iterative equation so basically uh, we can think of uh, y n plus 1 and this side is f of y n and so on right so here this is like a first order only uh, with a nonlinear right hand side so the iteration function f x uh, it can be plotted for uh, mu is equals to 1 uh, so the iteration function so the iteration iteration function fx can be plotted for mu is equals to 1 and uh, so that means uh, if mu is equals to 1 then we have uh, fx equals to uh, 2xn and fx equals to 2 times 1 minus xn. So, something like uh, of this type, um, so this is 0, this is uh, uh, n, this is xn. So, here we will have uh, if we, so this is 1 this side and this side is also 1. Now we are plotting, um, so we will have uh, mu is equals to 1, that means uh, something of this type. Yeah. And uh, uh, sorry, this is f of xn, and then we have uh, xn, so this is xn, so at xn is equals to half, and uh, I don't know, this is half, hopefully. Ah, and then this will be of this type. Okay.
now uh, for mu 0 less than or equal to mu less than or equal to half uh, the tent this is like a tent the tent map has uh, one attractor one attractor attractor um, one attractor uh, which is or attracting stationary point one attracting attracting stationary point right stationary point and uh, for mu is equals to half the interval Uh, 0 comma 1 is mapped into uh, mapped on 0 comma half and uh, all the later points are stationary all the later interval are stationary and for mu greater than half for mu greater than half a second stationary point a second stationary point stationary point x star is found which is given by x star equals to 2 mu by 1 plus mu right uh, 1 plus 2 mu when mu is greater than half so this is another stationary point now both the uh, both the stationary point that means uh, the stationary point uh, uh, this one and when mu is less than uh, or zero less than or equal to mu less than half then the another stationary point so both the stationary points so both uh, both the stationary points stationary points are unstable points are unstable why because unstable since if we think of this as uh, d of dx uh, on the right hand side we have f of x and so d of d, d of dx will be greater than 1 right so if it is greater than 1 uh, at these points then in that case it will lead to unstable solution at these points at these points so the the initial value of the iteration is chosen arbitrarily and uh, after the let us say first 200 iterations if we discard then the orbit converts to 0 comma 1 that means uh, at some point it is um, uh, converging but afterwards it shows uh, a, a diverging behavior so that means uh, here basically the stationary points are unstable if you are looking at the long term behavior and uh, like that i will show you one or two more examples where we can see uh, that um, uh, how this uh, chaos theory uh, actually motivates uh, or comes from the uh, sensitivity of the initial conditions that means uh, if we are uh, uh, playing with the initial conditions uh, or if we are uh, perturbing the initial conditions or approximating the initial conditions then uh, how the local as well as the global behavior of the solution uh, can be predicted. So, we will see one more so couple of more examples in the next class then we will define uh, the local divergence and uh, Lyapunov, expo Lyapunov exponents and uh, some theorems related to that. So, I will stop here today and we will continue this discussion uh, in the next class. Thank you.